What is up guys and welcome back to Let's Play Earthbound. It's been far, far, far too long as I generally say in these episodes now. Uh, but I had a whole bunch of schoolwork and stuff and a lot of my time was just filled with random crap that I had to do and I, I uh, yeah. But, welcome back. And I feel like we've been gone forever. So we should do a little bit of catching up on what's happened. Uh, a while back we went to the department store here in Forside where a mook came out of nowhere and kidnapped Paula and we tried to track Paula down and the mook and we were told Monotoli had something to do with it so we've been searching high and low for Monotoli we even went to the opposite side of Forside which is Moonside which just a, which just happened to be a mirage of sorts created by the evil this of the Monty statue the hologram projector thing anyway and he wasn't there so we went out into the desert we talked to some monkeys uh, we talked to Talarama got an update on what what our whole situation is and what we're supposed to be doing and we also got a trout flavored yogurt dispenser we learned teleport from monkeys and now we're back here because we got a hot tip that one of the people working in Monotoli's building is a fan of trout flavored yogurt so Let's see if we can find her in this city and keep going on. Um, I called my mom to make sure that Ness's uh, homesickness wouldn't rear its ugly head. Which, as you progress further in the game, the her dialogue changes. I suggest reading the, uh, the mom dialogue when you call her because it's actually pretty nice. Um, and I've also done a little bit of management here on my inventory. I got rid of everything that I don't need, uh, including the bag of Dragonite. I would suggest bringing that if it's your first time maybe uh, depending on if you're if you're struggling in the game yeah definitely bring the bag of Dragonite but I got rid of that just because it takes up space uh, I got rid of the shield killer because the neutralizer in this situation is better and yeah so here's everything here and we will continue on up this way and see if there's anyone that we can talk to that'll help us out going into Monotoli oh I wonder who this is is this is this the girl that we're supposed to talk to I kept asking around for trout flavored yogurt but what? You have a yogurt dispenser? May I have it? Before you can answer- Oh, sorry. Before you could answer, she took the yogurt dispenser. Now I can make trout flavored yogurt for my guests. You are so kind. I'll make some for you. My room's on the 48th floor. Don't forget to drop by. Hmm. My room's on the 48th floor. Don't forget to drop by. A statement so good she had to say it twice. The last time we were in the Monotoli building, we weren't allowed to go past the 47th floor, so... I don't know how that's gonna work out, but might as well. If you haven't if you're if you're following along, which there's a huge lull and you're if you're following along uh, Due to school and whatnot, but if you haven't talked to your mom I would go ahead and use a dollar here to use this payphone to talk to her because once Jeff gets home or once Ness gets homesick He is worthless. All right, so let's let's stare at her hips and uh, head on up to the 47th floor and a little bit about this area is this specific area is not too fun. It's a little bit boring, but we're past the halfway mark in this game now, which is when I believe the game really starts to take off, roughly halfway uh, through. I mean, I already love the game as much as, as, much as I can, and I, I feel the whole game is perfect, but once you get the halfway mark, everything starts to take off, things move faster, it gets more interesting, and I love it. All right, so let's talk to this one. Hopefully she's nicer than the the, uh, the last elevator girl. Shh, quiet. Aren't you, Ness? Mr. Monotoli's maid, Electra, told me about you. I'll take you to Mr. Monotoli's office on the 48th floor. Only you may go. And apparently Jeff, because Jeff's right here with us. So apparently that girl that we met outside that's a fan of trout-flavored yogurt. Weird. Her name is Electra. Nice name. Nice name. I wonder if, wonder if, her, wonder if that's her surname and her first name is Carmen. That, that, was, that wasn't even a joke. That was terrible. I, I need to apologize for that. So here we are on the 48th floor. And I should go ahead and warn you that there are going to be some, some new enemies coming up right through this door. So if you're, if you're not fully healed, go fully heal yourself. Because uh, this area gets a little bit tough, but it's manageable. So let's go ahead on in here. What do we got here? Secret code, please. Say your code in 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we have the Sentry Robot. 
The Sentry Robot is a little difficult. It's a metallic enemy, so PSI is not going to do any damage to it. And I don't, I don't believe Bottle Rockets will do anything to this thing either. So the only thing you need to do is uh, just bash it. It doesn't have that many... Uh, well, it, it has a few things it can do. It might be able to fire a beam at you. Yeah, it can fire a beam at you, and it can call for help. But the big thing is, if it fires a rocket at you, it's going to do roughly 100 damage, and that's no good. So, yeah, take these guys out. When there's only one, you're better off just using your regular attacks. However, when it calls for another sentry robot, you definitely want to use some uh, PSI rocket on it to take them both out, because... I have been in a position before where I've been hit by two of their rockets at once and just been obliterated. Alright, Jeff uh, lost a little bit of health there. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of life up on him, even though it's not really warranted. But hey, it's fine. Um, now, these two doors both lead to the same room, which have no outlet. It's a dead-end room, so I don't suggest going in there because I believe there's also a sentry robot in there. If you want to fight sentry robots and gain some experience, you can, but it's not really worth it. Um, we'll just go ahead and take this sentry robot out real quick. All their, um, all their dialogue is the same. They're in set positions, and there's a set amount of them, so there's not going to be any random encounters here. And yeah, like I said, as long as you get them one-on-one, -on -one, you should be fine. And... Only use PSI if there's more than one. I mean, yeah, so, like I said, this the, I like how I said the game starts taking off, like, halfway through, but this is probably the most boring area in the game. Good level up, let's see, vitality up by one, HP up by three, and we learned life up. The next thing, is that gamma, alpha, beta, delta, gamma, sigma, I don't know. I, I can't remember all my, my Greek letters right now. Um, anyway... So, let's go ahead and see if we can go into the bathrooms here. Well, both male and female have the same lines, so... Once again, in RPGs, you can never go into the bathrooms, and Earthbound is no exception to that rule. Alright, now both of these doors also go to the same room, and there's a sentry robot in there. However, this is one of the only robots in here that you can actually skip. If you just get him stuck on that table and... Oh, never mind. Maybe it's a different room where you can skip him, or I think if you go in through the other direction. I know that you can skip a robot in here, I'm just not sure which robot it is. There it is, because you can get through that. You can get through that corner, but not the other corner. Alright, and we're in here, some creepy looking desks, and... The upper door is optional, you don't have to go to it. There's a sudden guts pill in there though, so I'm going to go ahead and go in here and take down another sentry robot. I wish the dialogue went a little bit faster. I like how it speeds up when it's counting down, but, you know, gets a little bit annoying at times. And I'm probably going to leave all these. Wow, good job, Ness, getting those smash attacks, which is probably a bad sign for the other enemy that we'll find here. But, yeah, no, for now, the only enemies you'll find are sentry robots. So Sudden Guts build that might come in handy later on in the game. Because I don't think I, I don't think I've used sudden guts in here before. Have I explained it? I think I've explained it to where it uh, raises your guts ridiculously. Um, I'm gonna try something real quick here. I'm gonna see if you can skip this one. Nope. You might be able to if you uh, try a few times, but I'm not gonna try a few times mainly because I already got caught. You might be able to skip that if you get into the door fast enough. I'm not 100% certain. Take this guy down real quick. I don't want to jinx myself, but they haven't been calling for help. And I believe... I believe that's actually the last one. I might be wrong, though. Um, both of these rooms go to different places. This one goes to a room that has a vital capsule, which will raise your vitality up by one point, which is fantastic. Vitality keeps you alive if you get hit by a mortal blow. And this one takes you to another empty room, or is there a sentry in here? No sentry. Alright. So let's go up here into Electra's room. It's nice in here, I like the music. Electra's got bows or flowers or something in her hair, but she's a pretty cute maid. Let's talk to her. Your trout-flavored yogurt, sir. And we got the trout yogurt. Master Pokey's cool. He gave me something the other day and said, this is fit for a maid. Alright, I don't want to know what's what you, what you guys got going on. Anyway, if you go check out the uh, trout-flavored yogurt... 
I love the description. Trout yogurt. A fashionable treat for snobby, haughty cuisine people in big cities. When eaten, you recover about 30 HP. So it's not the best, but it's not the worst. I just, uh, it's just an interesting thing. Trout yogurt. Ugh. I can't, I, ugh. Just fish and dairy in general. That's just, ugh, terrible. But yeah, that's pretty much all you can do in here. I like your lamps. Nice bookshelf, but I don't think she does much reading, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so this next room, you definitely want to heal up if you're, if you're down at all. Ness is at full health. Jeff's at full health, and Ness is only missing five psychic points, which is fine. Um, because this next, this next battle's a little bit, a little bit tough. Um, yeah, I definitely want to grab the neutralizer, like I said. And, uh, let's go ahead on in here. Oh, look at the little guy! Ping! Clankety-clank! Rattle, rattle, drawr! Squeak, tweet, tweet, clank! Sounds like he's got some issues going on. Oh, he's so adorable. All right, so here, as much as I hate this enemy, I love his. I love the idea of this enemy. This is the clumsy robot. It has a lot of quote-unquote attacks, but it only has one real attack. What I mean by that is, a lot of the times it'll say it like rolled around or it dropped the bolt or it shook violently, uh, or something like that. It'll even say that it'll it takes out a bologna sandwich to eat it, but it doesn't recover any health when it does that. It's just a uh, text. But it does have one real attack, and that's where it file, files, fires a missile at you, and that does about 120 damage to both people, and that's a ridiculous amount. And I've seen it do 320 damage before. That's no fun. And it also starts off with a PSI shield, so you definitely want to bash the first turn with Ness, and go ahead and do your goods, and use the neutralizer, which will destroy everything on both sides, but we don't have anything on our side. And he dodged quickly, so now we're just gonna go ahead and PSI Rockin. If you have a bag of Dragonite, you could use it on this guy, but bottle rockets and I believe bombs will not work. So just go ahead and do everything, and... Okay, so it can fire a strange beam and make you not move, but yeah. Uh, good defense, but I don't believe it has too insane of health. Just keep hammering at it until it goes down. Yeah, but, um, Bag of Dragonite, uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil what it does until I use it in the game, but I don't know how long that's going to be. Hey, there it is. And it says its HP is maxed out, but that's a red herring. It, the, the HP does not go up at all. Wait. Did he put up a shield? Have I been, have I been wasting my, have I been wasting my attacks on him? Neutralizer. Okay, so he put his shield back up. I forgot he could do that. Okay, so he can put his shield back up. Um, was not even paying attention. This is what happens when you, uh, when you look away from the screen for a little bit and just continue talking to people. Really? Does that, am I not doing anything to him? This is bullcrap. Okay. So, I might be mistaken. It's been a long time since I fought this guy, but... If I'm if I haven't been doing any damage to him, that's not good. Because we should at least be doing something to it. And look at this. This is just annoying. And he once again he's not maxing out his HP. Now I'm just can you hear this? That's me just hammering the A button, hoping to take him down. Okay, here we go. Yeah, but like I said, it's got a lot of attacks, but only one real attack. Let me one second. Sorry, my throat got a little bit scratchy there. Uh, but once you get it down to enough health, here's what happens. And this is one of the best parts. All of a sudden, some guys rushed into the room. It was the Runaway Five! Lucky quickly ducked behind the robot. I flipped the switch and it stopped! Ha ha ha! Jeez, what a loser robot! It was so easy to stop! That was quick thinking! Clumsy robot stopped moving. So apparently... Rockin' does not do a darn thing to that thing, or it put up a shield and I wasn't paying attention. Either way, the only attack it has is that missile, so just keep hammering on that button. As I as I held the, the controller up to the microphone, you could just hear me hammering on the button, and it gives off a ton of experience, 16,000. However, we're leveled up enough to where that's not too bad of a deal. Look, it's the Runaway 5, and all five of them, so let's go ahead and talk to them, see what Jay've been up to. We don't have any money, we are strong, however. What you got to say? Let's break into the room next door. Except I need to go to the bathroom first. Uh, you, good luck. There's something groaning in there. What you got to say? 
I thought that I heard a girl's voice. Jeff, have you been squealing again? We would like to pay you back. We'll help you in whatever way we can. All right, well, that's good to know. Let's talk to you, see what you got going on. The room next door seems suspicious somehow. All right, so let's head into the next door. Oh my god, it's a bear! Ah! Stop! That's enough! Please, stop! I give up! I really do! What? What? I, I ran away from that guy, yet apparently thought I was going to attack her. That bear threw me off, though. This bear won't attack you. He's stuffed. Oh, that's good. So apparently, uh, he's all freaking out, and I don't know why I didn't point this out. But look, it's Paula! Paula, what have you been up to? Ness, you finally made it here. I'm fine. I believed you'd come and save me. Mr. Monotoli isn't really a bad person. Take some time to listen to him. All right, he's all shaken and scared. This is a little bit weird looking. Hmm. Look at my skinny arms, thin body, and gray hair. I've become so weak since I lost the Mani Mani statue. You dick. Stay away from that thing. It's evil. I'm sorry I kidnapped Paula. I haven't done anything to her. Paula is a nice girl. Paula, return to Ness. I'm sorry I've created so much trouble for you. And we finally got our power player back. So apparently Mani Mani had uh, control of Mr. Monitoli and made Paula get kidnapped by him. And I love this song. I'll tell you everything. The Mani Mani statue creates an illusion. It attracts evil spirits and weakens your heart. The power scared me so much, I hid the statue in the warehouse at Jackie's Cafe. I often went there to pray. Cryptic words appeared to me while I was in the illusion. Ness, your name appeared in the cryptic messages. Stop Ness and do so by your own hand. Or don't let them go to Summers. Or make sure they know nothing of the pyramid. I don't fully understand the messages, but somehow obviously, but someone doesn't obviously, I will eventually learn to speak one day, but someone obviously doesn't want you to go to Summers. Evil. I guess, or something. I, I, I could hear the name. Anyway, the evil side would be in trouble if you visit Summers. Oh, on the contrary, you should definitely go to Summers, especially because they don't want you to make it there. Would you like to hear the whole story again? No, thank you. Summers is located across the ocean. Take my helicopter. I'll open the door to my heliport. Oh, look. He just moved the bear. And... A door opens. Nice. I knew that wall looked a little bit suspicious. I don't know why. I, had, I don't know why you, the bear was so important. That, that's a weird-looking bear. Bears are scary. You must go on, Ness. This is your destiny, Paula. It's time we said goodbye. Take care. I don't want to know what you guys did, but apparently he didn't do anything to her. So if you look at this, it won't attack you. Says it's stuffed. Um. Of course, now everyone's blocked out. Um. Nice room. Very, very fancy. I like the art on the wall. He's got two of the same paintings, though. Everything's a little bit golden. All right, we should go. We should go onto the teleport and head to Summers, wherever Summers may be. A little bit of an ominous hallway here. All right, nice helicopter. What? Oh no, I know this song. Which, by the way, Earth Smash Brothers Melee. We're on top of the building, and look, there's a helicopter. Oh my god, it's Pokey! Ness, you pinheaded idiot! You're just a half step too slow. I'm getting out of here. Since Monotoli has become a plain old man again, I have no more use for him. This helicopter will really come in handy. Looks like you're the world class loser again! Well, darn it! Stupid, stupid Pokey! Arr, makes me want to throw Jeff off this building. Well, there's nothing else we can do. Which, like I said, Super Smash Brothers Melee has this uh, thing here. And I believe the door on Super Smash Brothers Melee also said Heli on it. Anyway, let's go back inside. We gotta tell Monotoli what happened. I didn't know he was... Ah, him and Pokey together? Bastards. So the bears moved. I guess that didn't close the door. Were you trying to, were you trying to shut us out there? Are you still on the side of evil? Pokey took the helicopter? I hope he's okay. I, I do believe you're evil. You have got to be plain evil. Alright, well, looks like we're kind of screwed here. Wait, what? What you got, Paula? Ooh, I was a little dizzy, but I'm okay now. To get to Summers, we need to go back to Threek. Threed. Threek. Wow, I read it and then still said Threek. Yet somehow, I know that's where we must go. 
All right. So apparently we got to go back to three. Wow, you guys did a lot while I was in the bathroom. Ha ha ha. You want to go to three as soon as possible? We can take you to three in our tour bus. I'll get the bus and wait for you just outside the building. All right, so uh, I'm going to let this episode go a little bit longer just because I don't want to have this whole thing wait until next time. Unfortunately, you do have to walk your whole self down there. There's no, there's no quick travel where as soon as you like leave the room. I don't believe there's any areas like that where it teleports you anywhere without, you know, actually using teleport. Um, I believe the sentry robots will all be gone. Let me double check on that real quick. Yeah, I believe there's a sentry robot in there, so uh, once you take down the clumsy robot and do all that stuff, the sentry robot should be gone. Yep, what's going on? Hello, how are you? This is Apple Kid. I never know what I have his voice to be. I think I'm a real genius. In fact, I know I'm a genius. Why? Well, I have discovered the primary enemy of you and all of humanity. We have to fight and defeat this being. To do so, we need to invent a machine called the Phase Distorter. I've got to find the wandering scientist, Dr. Andonuts, and make the distorter, so I may be gone for a while. Later, click. Alright, so apparently we need the Phase Distorter, and he's going to look for some lost Andonuts guy. Alright, what you got to say? Take us down. What do I, uh, would an autograph be asking far for too much? Nah, we'll get you one. I don't mean your autograph, silly. I forgot her dialogue changes. Uh, I don't know if the other girl's dialogue changes. I will pay attention to that. That was a little bit of a graphical glitch there. That was interesting. I have to roll that back and production to see if that says anything. Do you guys say anything? A lot has happened to me. I have to try and sort it all out. Thinking is too tough for me. All right, I'm not even going to talk to the other guy. So let's go ahead and talk to her. You say anything different? This elevator's going down there. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't say anything different. You'd think seeing uh, the Runaway 5 would make her happy, but apparently... Oh, yeah, graphical glitch. I never knew about that graphical glitch. It could just be the emulator. I'll have to, I'll have to play this part on my cartridge and see if it's there. Anyway. What now? Who is calling us? Hello, this is Orange Kid. Sorry I haven't called lately. I'm still working on the way to change boiled eggs into raw eggs. Why? That's, well, maybe... It's taking longer than I thought. I'm going to really work at it, though. Talk to me later. Click. All right. All these scientists are calling us to tell us of their inventions. But really, all I want to do is boogie. Okay, you can get on the bus now. All right, once again, awesome song. All right, on to three. I do love this song. And hopefully, you know, the Runaway 5 won't get into any more monetary trouble. They managed to survive that whole long time without getting into another terrible contract, so that's pretty good. And if you see the uh, the letters right there, it says Runaway, but it's all mirrored because the sprite's mirrored. So, yeah, Runaway. Go ahead and be quiet here for a second. So, we gotta get to Summers, but there's also a wandering scientist that needs to be found somewhere. Maybe he'll be in Summers. Who knows? Of course, to get to Summers, we got to go back to three, so we'll figure out what's going on in three. Uh, but that might be a challenge for next time, depending on what the dialogue with the Runaway Five is once we get there. No more ghosts in here, and ghosts don't like funk, so they wouldn't stand a chance anyway. God, I forgot how long this trip back to three is. Three, three, three. I get it confused. I just say whatever comes out of my mouth now. Well, of course I say whatever comes out of my mouth. That's speaking. Uh. Alright, nice. Back into the good old town of Threed. Alright, we made it. I'm sorry we couldn't do more for you. Remember, though, we're on your side. When you're having a tough time, just think of our songs and imagine the Runaway Five singing somewhere far, far away. By the way... Why did you need to come back here? You must have forgotten some very important item or gadget here. How's that for a guess? Am I close? Well, you don't have to tell me. See you later, and good luck. Hmm. He makes a good point. There must be something here that we forgot about. Hmm. But we'll have to save that for next time, which I will be recording immediately after this. So I will see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. And uh, I should be back on a normal schedule now, hopefully. A normal-ish. 
But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.